Hello everybody, how's it going? This is Pete Leon here uh, with a tip for you today for removing backscatter from your underwater images. Um, if you don't know what backscatter is, it's that uh, nasty stuff that shows up in your underwater photos when you're using flash and there's uh, stuff floating around in the water that can be quite unsightly. Um, First of all, though, let me apologize for not getting out very many videos of late. Uh, I've just been slogging through the wedding season and i uh, finally caught up on all my editing and I have a bunch of videos that I want to put out. Um, but uh, I thought I'd knock out this one quickly as a few friends have been asking me about how to remove backscatter from your underwater shots. And here's one I came across. It's not my idea. I saw it from another video a while back and I thought it would be a good idea to share it with friends. So uh, I've got some underwater shots here. I uh, went out uh, yesterday with my good friend and awesome underwater photographer and nature photographer, Mr. Sean Miller. And I've got uh, a shot here I thought I'd use it as an example. Here's a photo with some uh, batfish that have made their way back to um, Okinawa in schools they're quite a big fish and very fun to swim alongside and photograph but as you can see here we've got uh, some nasty backscatter in the water uh, this day uh, which is showing up because of my flash that I used on my underwater camera so what I'm going to do is just take it into Photoshop now actually I've already done that so I'm just going to slip over to Photoshop here we are okay first thing you want to get going to want to do is make another layer uh, of your image. So I'm going to drag that down to the new layer icon there. So we've got two layers. And next, what I'm going to do is come up to my filters and create a uh, dust and scratches filter. Here we are here, dust and scratches under noise. I'm going to pop that on. And let's see, that's too strong. It makes it look like a bit of an oil painting, but I'm gonna set my radius down low to somewhere that gets rid of a lot of the backscatter, at least most of it to begin with. Uh, somewhere around there. Don't worry about what the fish look like at the moment. Um, they are going to be nice and clear shortly. So that's a bit too much but uh, for this example I'll set it just around here to give you an example. This photo is relatively easy because there's not too much detail in the background. Uh, when you get a lot of backscatter over faces of, of, and uh, the skin or the front of the fish it can be a lot trickier to get rid of. But here we are so I'm just going to set it around here. For now click OK. OK let it apply that to the layer. My computer's running a little bit slow because I'm doing some uploading in the background. Uh, just give us one second and you'll see it pop up down here in our history palette. Yeah, history drop down menu, rather. And what I'm going to do is click the little icon next to it here in the history uh, area. Just click that. That's the history brush icon. Now what I'm going to do is go back one step, clicking on this duplicate layer, and we're back to where we began. Now I'll come over to my brushes. Oh, there's my phone in the background. Sorry about that. Let me put that on manner mode. And let's get the history brush, which is right here. Okay, so now that we have that selected and we have the dust and scratches filter as the next step, which we never actually fully use, what we're going to do now is just choose the size of our brush here and brush onto the scene where we want uh, those dust uh, the backscatter, I should say, sorry, sorry to uh, disappear. So I'm going to start brushing in here now. And as you can see, the backscatter quickly and easily dissolves away. So obviously, if there's a lot of detail in the background, uh, you're going to want to lessen the effect uh, of your filter because it's going to lose a lot of detail back there. But as you can see, this is just a real quick and easy way to eliminate all that nasty stuff. And let me just set my hardness a bit different there. There we go. And you can very quickly and easily come through and eliminate eliminate most of the backscatter. There we go. So obviously I'm just going around real quickly now, brushing it away. So what that little history brush allows us to do is to 
use something, uh, an effect that we had applied and we've stepped back from in the history drop down menu and uh, allows us to brush in just parts of that effect. So just to give you an idea, going around very quickly and voila, well, something like that. Okay, so anyway, you need to play around with uh, the amount and the strength of the setting, but just to give you an idea, let's have a look at before. Okay, there it is there and after. Okay, so if you want to spend a bit more time on it, of course you can get it a lot better than I have here. But for a very quick fix, I think that works quite well. So uh, once I'm done, I'll just save that and I'm just going to flatten this image because I have a backup of it. I'm not going to work on it again and I'll just close that out, save and now it will go back to Lightroom in just a second. Okay, once it loads up properly, we should be able to see the effect. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so there we are. There's my two shots, my original raw image, and now my TIFF. So uh, that's a quick and easy way to get rid of a lot of backscatter if you still have some spots, which I'm sure surely you will. Just use your uh, spot brush remover in Lightroom. Just click on a few of the remaining spots if you want to, and you can very quickly and easily clean up your image. So there we are. Thanks very much for watching and listening. I uh, hope this audio sounds okay. I'm using a new pop filter over the top of my microphone today, and uh, I will be putting out more videos very soon, so stay tuned. All right, thanks very much. Happy shooting. See ya.